Good evening and salutations, my Days of Our Lives fans. You know what? Let's start off with Lonnie and Chanel. Because there was one really great part in this whole scene. And, um, this is when Chanel was not there. Well, this is when Lonnie was like, yeah, um, Eli told me that you saw him naked and stuff. Now, at first I was like, alright, it's not like, you know, she was just walking around the house and she just walked in his room while he was naked or anything like that. So at first I was like, okay, I mean, she kind of just walked in and the dude was already naked, like. But then, Chanel, being who she is, started talking about him in a very sexual way. And Lonnie was like, yeah, we're going to have to stop that, like, right now. Um, because at first she was, one thing that she said that was really interesting and really important, I didn't think I was going to really hear this, was the fact that she called her out for objectifying Eli, you know, she was like, you know, you wouldn't like, you know, you wouldn't sit down like that if you was hearing another guy talking about a woman's body like that, you wouldn't like that, you know? So why would you sit there and do it to him? And I was, I was in there like, I mean, I, I really did like that. And I, I, I really do hope in the future that's actually called out a lot more. Um, it reminds me of that scene in General Hospital when Lucy walked into the man's, walked into the, um, to the boys' locker room. She just walked in there while Chase was sitting there. Um, Chase was, I guess he was getting out the shower or whatever. And she just walked in there and just started looking at him like he was a piece of meat. And was, I guess she was sitting there trying to convince him to join the nurse's bowl or whatever. But, I mean, here's the thing. I wasn't the only person that had a problem with that, you know. And I, for me, it, it really angered me. Because if the roles were reversed, there would have been letters going towards Channel 7 practically trying to get their sponsors um, taken away from them. But it was like, y'all are okay, y'all are cool, isn't it? There's someone in that scene? Are you kidding me? So, I'm, I'm so glad that Lonnie said that. Um... And all she was just like, yo, listen, I'm not comfortable with you sitting there talking to my husband, you know, talking about my husband like that. It, it didn't register to her in the beginning, to be honest. It, it really didn't. There was a couple of things that didn't really register. You know, she was like, well, how would you feel if somebody was sitting there doing that to you? Of course, you know, um, Chanel gives the answer that, um, well, she, she just gives an answer that's just like, wow, you just really come across as super vapid, don't you? She was like, oh, wow, I wouldn't mind. I'm like, okay, sweetheart, you really just missed the mark on that. But she did, she did apologize. So, to some extent, I'll, I'll, I'll give her credit for that. Um, but then she says something that was just like, Jesus Christ, you know. She said... <laughs> Maturity is overrated. Maturity is overrated. Listen, there's a fine line between being boring and bland and whatever. And whatever this woman is. When she said that, it just made me sit there and think, see, this is the reason why I'm having so much of a hard time when I talk about her. Because it's like, I don't want to sit there and be super negative and being like, oh, I'm just going to crap, 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 crap on her. No. I generally don't like crapping on people. I really don't. But I say a lot of times, listen, it's the material that you're giving me. If you're going to give me crap material, crappy characters, doing crappy things, then when I do these reviews, I'm not going to sit there and be pooping out rainbows. With these characters. I just, I can't do it. I'm not just going to sit there and lie for the sake of just, you know, being super upbeat. Like, I just, I, I can't do that. I, I just can't. So, at that point, 
it's just like, yes, no, you're you're just gonna be the crap character that I'm just gonna love and hate until you're gone. That's just gonna be so awesome. But she does talk about getting a job, and you know, she baked her some cookies or whatever, and she was like, you know, listen, I wanna um, you know, open up a bakery. Now she was thinking talking about the startup cost is low, but I'm just like, well, where are you gonna get the money from? Because I know you're not gonna sit there and ask Lonnie and Eli. I mean. Lottie was practically like, yeah, you've been here, like, way too long, and, um, you know, this place is small, and you should have been gone, like, yesterday, so, um, did, did you find a job? Like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, that's her plan. She's gonna sit there up at the bakery. Apparently, her cooking, her bakery is really good. Like, her baking skills is really good. To be honest, I didn't really think she was actually good at anything, so I give her points for that. With that being said, she does try to um, track down um, Abe. Abe is sitting there talking to um, Paulina. And when Abe tells Paulina, hey, listen, so these businesses, these new businesses, um, they're going to get rent free for the first year. And uh, Paulina was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? What did you say? You said free? Free? What, what, what was that? What, what does that mean? What does free mean? What? You're joking, right? So she has a problem with that. And, um, you know, they, they talk about it back and forth. You know, Abe is like, listen, we're doing good for the community. And it's supposed to be about the community, not about lining up your pockets. And I understand both. I understand where they're both coming from. But they kind of squash it. And, you know, Abe is, you know, Pauline is like, well, I'm pretty sure we'll sit there and find a way to work together. You know, we'll work this out. And Abe's like, so that's a polite way of to saying we're stuck with, with with each other, right? I'm like, Abe, Abe is a sharp one. Abe has been around on this show for years. I remember seeing there's something on um, Instagram. I'm going to sit down and link it with it. It's called um, Classic Days Episodes. I still got to watch the one where Mar Marlena gets possessed by the devil. Man, that must have been a fun time. I mean, that was before I actually started watching soap operas, but that 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 just sounds that sounds fun. I and mean, it sounds so nineties, and that's what makes it so great. I mean, I feel like they couldn't pull off this. I I feel like they couldn't pull off a story like that now for just so many reasons because clearly only takes one person to get offended, but. Man, that would be really great if something like that happened now. Um, the hell was I actually sent this thing? Oh, so Chanel, at first she she walks up to both of them, and you know, at first, you know, um, Paulina and Chanel kind of get into it, and then um, you know, Abe was like, hey. You know, listen, um, I'm going to head out. But then they apologize. And Abe is like, you know, you can kind of hang it out. You know, yeah, there's a diner. Y'all can sit there and talk, you know, talk. And, you know, I'll talk to both of y'all soon. And at one point I was like, Chanel, did you forget why you actually came there for? Because there was one point where I was just like, um, you should probably talk to them about your, um, your business plan. Since you have the cookies here, you can talk. So anyways, eventually she does sit there and talk about it. And, um, you know, she talks about, well, she has a, a plan, a proposal, whatever. She even actually has some samples, and Abe approves at least of the samples and stuff like that. And, you know, Paulina has a look on her face like she's shocked at first. She has a look on her face like she's shocked at first. But the thing is, I feel like the reasons why, I feel like the reason why she is giving, um, Chanel that look, that, ugh. It's not because she doesn't want her daughter to work. It's because apparently whatever she has planned with the square, it's a lot more sinister than even Abe knows about. And she doesn't want her daughter getting caught up in it. So, um, it's going to be interesting. And at one point she was sitting there talking to herself. Like she was in the square. She was looking at, um, whatever that thing was. And Abe was like, uh... Should I come back when you finish talking to your imaginary friend? Like, what's, what's good? You all right? You, you, you good? <laughs> what's going on?
So, let's talk about Ben and Claire because this scene started off great and then it turned into something that I'm just like <laughs> what? So Ben knocks over the lamp. Um you know, see I mean on um, Claire Smith they're trying to like escape or whatever. She's crying and trying to move around and I'm just like I don't really know what to say about this acting. But okay, you you keep doing you. So, I have to tell you the truth. Again, I look at this scene and I'm like, man, this is kind of poetic. I mean, you try to kill your cousin twice by burning her alive. And now you're going to get burnt alive in the same cabin that you try to kill your cousin twice. I, I don't even know what to say about that. Anyway, Ben comes in and um, he knocks over the lamp. He looks at Claire. And then he starts to, I guess, like, I don't really know. How did he actually manage to... I, I, I guess I'm just going to sit there and say soap opera logic. It seems like, alright, so the flames is there. I guess he takes his shirt or, or something. And he starts, like, you know, trying to hit the flames or whatever. And I'm just sitting there thinking. The, the scene where it ends, I was like, um... I'm pretty sure doing that is just going to cause more flames. Because the last time I checked... At least, you know, when I was in kindergarten and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure every fireman that actually came to my school told us not to do that. And he's doing that. I know, I know, I know. He couldn't find water in time and yada, yada, yada. He did what he could. Uh, somehow, that worked and he unties her. He unties her. I'm like, okay, you know what? Listen, this is a great scene. Minus whatever logic that I'm just going to throw out the window about that scene. Great scene so far. Alright, cool. So you're going to untie her, you're going to get her out because I'm pretty sure smoke inhalation is an actual thing. I'm pretty sure of that. I know I'm sure of that because Ben was actually having health problems because of that. So as he's untying her, they decide to start talking about their feelings. And I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, listen, this is all great. This is, you know, we're clearing the air. But since the room is kind of smoky, maybe you should kind of take that conversation outside. What, what, what do you say? No? We're just going to finish it here? Okay. All right. This makes sense. So, you know, Claire apologizes for kissing Ben because Ben was like, oh, well, I was feeling guilty or whatever. He says, so I don't remember exactly how it started, but he was sitting there talking about the kiss. And, um, Snitter saying that Jordan was leading him there because he felt guilty about cheating on Sierra, even though Sierra clearly wants nothing to do with him, but, um, you know, in his heart, he, um, feels like she's cheating. I don't know. If a woman actually was coming at me the way that Sierra came at me, I don't know. I mean, listen, we had our years together, and I may be in love with her, or in love with her, but I'm like, you know what, I, I didn't do anything wrong. That's how I'm going to sit there and, um, yeah, um, I'm a person that has less patience than Ben does. Uh, I'll say that, but yeah, they, they start talking and she apologizes and he's like, no, it's nothing to worry about. And I'm just like, so you're just going to keep talking and just breathing in the smoke because this still makes sense to y'all. While he's coughing. They're both coughing, and they're still sitting there trying to talk about their feelings. I was like, this is, okay, whatever. So, Sean eventually gets there. He talks to Jan, and Jan's like, yeah, I double-crossed you. The sins of the fathers, the sins of the daughter, or some crap like that. And she was all like, uh, um, you know, I'm going to kill your daughter or something like that. So, he leaves Bella. He rushes over there, and, uh, you know, he's late to the party. But then Claire... Which, I'm not going to lie, I did actually find this kind of funny. Claire actually called Jan crazy. And I'm like, you know, I've been watching this show for a while. And I'm pretty sure you got offended when somebody was sitting there saying the word crazy. But you had no problem calling her crazy when she did what she tried to do to you. I just... <laughs> just about that kind of funny. I was like, 
Really, Claire? Because I'm pretty sure that was like a trigger word for you last time. Ah, it was a long time ago. I guess we just kind of forgot about that. Um, so with that being said, you know, Ben is like, oh, I'd like to stay here for a little bit. Why? Why do you want to sit there and stay in this dirty, burnt-up place that's filled with smoke still? Sean's like, I can't do that. This is an act of, you know, this is a crime scene. And, you know, Claire's like, oh, well, he saved my life. And, you know, Sean's like, all right. You know, he sh shakes his hand. He says, thank you. He walks away. And Ben just kind of just stands there. And I'm just like, dude. I, I just, I didn't even know what to say. I was like, why are you staying in this burnt up place that is still filled with smoke? Why? I understand he wanted to go there to be closer to Sierra, but I was like, bro, it's smoky as hell in here. You can't sit there and mope outside. That, that's just not an option. Okay. okay. You know, sometimes with these soap operas, and I was sitting there thinking about this today, and I was thinking about Ben, and I was thinking about um, Michael. And they're both great actors when you give them, like, good scenes and good stuff to do and they can actually show off their their acting. Ben, he's a good actor in certain situations. But for the most part, he's a decent actor. People say he's a lot better than I think he is, but whatever. The point is, if you don't give him something to do, and you just have them doing, I like to sit there and say, clown stuff. Then it's just like, you're wasting these people's potentials. And when they decide they want to leave, then you want to sit there and throw more money and be like, oh, we'll give you something better to do. And it's like, come on, did you not learn anything what happened with Greg and how he felt like he was a backseat driver in his own show or in, like in his own character? Something that he said. I don't know how they managed to actually get him back or maybe whatever. The point is, he left for a reason. Now... I've gotten used to Ben. I don't want the guy to go. But when you give him scenes where he's just moping around in a smoky, you know, cabin that looked like it's about to fall apart if you breathe on it too hard, like, what is that supposed to do? I can't be the only person that thinks like this when I see, when you see scenes like that. I, I can't be. Oh, and, um, I know I'm kind of skipping a couple of scenes, but, uh, Bella was sitting there talking to Eli for a little bit about, um, um, Chloe and stuff like that, and about how he lost her to Brady, and, you know, he kind of just, like, giving up or whatever, and Eli's like, listen, just don't throw in the towel. You know, there's plenty of times where I felt like it was the end, but it wasn't. So don't just, you know, give up hope or whatever. But Jan Spears calls up and Jan's like, hey, listen, I need a pilot, I need money, and I need gummy bears. Okay. And <laughs> Philip didn't even hesitate. He was like, all right, done. What do you want me to meet you at? So he goes to the strip or whatever. And, um, you know, once again, Jan's like, oh... Because, you know, Jan's like, listen, you can tell this pilot to sit there and, and drop me off to Stateville, to Statesville or whatever. So, Chloe's going to sit there and come with me, and then when we're good and we're safe, then um, I'll let her go. He's like, yo, that's not part of the plan. So, Jan's like, listen, get the money, and if you do anything, I'm going to shoot her in front of you. Okay, Jan Spears, um, I wonder when this circus is going to be over. Um... I don't know. I am personally just really, really, really tired of seeing her. She gives me Nell vibes from General Hospital, and um, I really did not like her. Um, I think she is a very poor villain. I think that at the bet at, at the very best, she belongs on a Lifetime movie or something. Um, but this is just pathetic as far as a villain, especially when I heard from other people that they've had better villains than Jan Spears. And apparently, when Philip and Eli was sitting there talking, 
Jan had this thing about Sean for 20 years. 20 goddamn years. <sighs> Listen, desperation is, is attractive to no one. And by the way, I, I felt like I need to sit there and say this. So, tomorrow, my review is going to be a little bit later. Because I'm actually going on a date. Um, which is why my review was late last Friday. But um, I'm still going to do it because, you know, still love watching and talking about it and stuff like that. So it's still going to be out. But I, I really do appreciate everyone that is going to watch it. Um, if you don't feel like waiting, I know Andre does his reviews. DC is another guy that does um, days reviews for a week and stuff like that. He's also pretty good. Actually, I, I mean, as, as far as the two reviews go, I guess Andre does more because he really, like, does, like, 30-minute reviews or whatever, but I like DC's reviews as well. Um, so, if, you know, people don't feel like waiting, you know, definitely check out him. He's pretty good. But if you do watch it, I really do appreciate it because, you know, love doing it. Um, the hell was I supposed to say? Yeah, I, kinda, I, I want to say that in the beginning... But then I kind of forgot, and I was like, oh, Ugh. I don't feel like doing this again. <laughs> I don't feel like re-redoing re this again. So, anyway, um, so, Chloe's like, listen, just give me the money, and, you know, whatever. With that being said, she starts walking, she turns around, and she starts fighting um, with Chloe. I mean, she starts fighting with Jen over the gun. So, they're fighting, they're doing this back and forth. And, I'm not going to lie, Philip has grown on me. And with that being said, what the hell was he actually doing? This guy was doing like this or whatever. Like, like he was waiting to like play football or something. I was like, what What are you doing? I mean, maybe you should sit there and try to rush and help. I don't know. There wasn't time anyway. But... I felt like running would have been the better option, running towards them, than just whatever he was doing. The gun goes off. They both give this look like, you know, who got shot. Or at least the audience does. Um, so it would be really interesting. I'm not going to lie. They actually, I was like this, you know, it's, it's actually kind of amazing because usually stuff like that would be more suitable for, like, Cliffhanger Fridays, but... Um, I'm cool now waiting two days, um, so yeah, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. I'm not gonna lie, I know I missed something. I know I missed something, I don't know what I missed, but I know I missed something, but with that being said, I think that's actually about it. Um, but yeah, I want to thank everyone for their patience, um, and yeah, I, I actually, um, as another reason why I was, um, late on my review last week, just didn't really say anything, um, I want to jinx it, because it's actually... I actually like this girl. Um, and this is going to be a second time, but, you know, looking forward to it. So, um, with that being said, I want to thank everyone for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. See you in the next video. I, I feel like I totally screwed up my outro, but I just, <laughs> I'm just like, alright. Have a good night, everyone. See you in the next video.